everybody let's get this here going mr thomas moppin and his grandson daniel rothwell they've first of all i consider them dear friends of mine we've known each other for a few years now and somehow some way through the family line uh, my wife's family line uh, i believe we're in-laws directly indirectly somehow some way i think aren't we <laughs> but anyway I uh, want to thank everyone for coming tonight to the Williamson County Library. Man, this is like the super cool. It's our third show. Really great turnout. It's really cool. I'm Don Swartz, Southern Trace songwriters, by the way. Um, I apologize for the dress, the way I'm dressed, but I am exhausted. I've been on the road, do a lot of shows up in Bardstown, Kentucky. Yes, ma'am. And um, so I, you know, I leave home. The sun's out, and it's out again, but it was nice and sunshiny. And I get over here, and it's pouring down rain. I'm in sandals. But anyway, let's get this thing started. Put your hands together for Mr. Thomas Moppin and Daniel Rothwell. I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad to see all of y'all, too, you know, uh, and uh, I would like for you to dance, too, some of you anyway, or one of you, all of you. <laughs> we'll try to make it a little bit, sort of like, like maybe I have learned to dance over my 80 years, November, uh, I'm not big enough to be that old, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot remember when I didn't dance, really. Uh, went to school in Eagleville, and uh, I basketball coach, because I was a little old skinny. I've always been a little old skinny-legged boy. Still an old skinny-legged man now. But our basketball coach... Uh, Every time I'd meet him in the hall of somewhere, you know, he'd want me to dance. And uh, I sort of wondered at that time why that older person uh, wanted to see a little old young boy dance. So as I got older, maybe he'd seen something that I didn't see. Or maybe he had a way of bring it out because Eagleville we everybody know, knew everybody how much money they had who they was running around with and all that stuff you know <laughs> and uh, and I am one of ten kids five boys and five girls and uh, uh, I inherited I inherited my rhythm and I believe I inherited my timing uh because my mom's uh, grand, my mom's mom pretty well lived with us. And uh, this was, remember back when I was just a young boy, uh, she was barefooted most of the time, especially in the summertime. And a tune would come on the radio, and uh, I can still remember her feet hitting the floor. She had the best timing. Her timing was right on top of the music. And she danced in a straight up, straight up stature, which uh, a flat foot dancer and a buck dancer should, should stand up straight. You know, don't have to, because on my dad's side, I seen several of the older people. And most of them, been over a little bit because they done got old too. But I never seen my mom dance at all. My dad had good rhythm, good timing. He could round dance and uh, two step really good. But just about all of us has danced at one time or the other. 
And, uh, but I had a, I had a, oh, my oldest sister, she, she could dance pretty good, had good timing. We all had different steps, which that, that should go along with uh, a buck dancer. Uh, you create your own. We hear the music different, you know. We react to it different. And uh, I had a brother four years older than me that we favored a lot. I thought was a I thought was a good dancer. He had good timing, good rhythm, different steps. And uh, we always had we always at the same age danced in the same category when we danced in competition. I've danced in a lot of competitions uh, over my years. And I like it. I, I like to dance in competition. Competition will make you better. Nobody really likes to lose, but it, it makes you better. It keeps you looking for whoever you are. And uh, just about everybody is placed ahead of me, which that's fine. I think you need to get beat, get beat because you win them all, you know, you think you know it all. And, and it's just better to get your wings clipped, you know. And uh, then my younger brother, two years younger than me, he wouldn't, neither dance than my older brother was. And uh, we was dancing in West Tennessee once. He marked time real good. He got a first, I got a second. <laughs> he said, I'm going to get me a T-shirt and wear it. I'm the brother that beat Thomas. <laughs> but he could sing really good. Uh, uh, sang a little bit like Marty Robbins. Could sing just like Marty Robbins, but he tried to get away from it a little bit. Good singer. And uh, so... I've been going to square dances ever since I've been big enough to get somebody to carry me or we'd hitchhike or something. Williamson County, as far as square dancing, Williamson County, I believe had the most square dancers that I'd ever seen in one county. Back when I was younger, uh, I was uh, at a square dance every Friday or Saturday night somewhere. And you could go to probably two or three different square dancers around, you know. It was, it's phased out now, phased out. Dancing is good for you. It's good exercise. It's good physical exercise. And uh, so I met my wife at a square dance. She didn't like me. <laughs> I knew ever, I knew ever just about everyone there, but I knew nobody's name hardly. And uh, uh, so she, she really don't like to dance, but she don't mind me going. We've been married fifty-seven years, the second of June, this past year, and we've had one argument, and that's still going on. No, we've always got along good. We've always got along good. And uh, she spent 35 years there at the farmer's co-op uh, in the office with Jeannie and Jane Wilson. And uh, I guess she's been retired uh, 10 or 12 years. So uh, uh, we got married. 57 years ago, and uh, I just quit dancing. I quit dancing. We had uh, we had his mom come along, and then about four years later, we had another daughter come along, and uh, so I, did, I didn't dance at all. So when his mom got about 
14 to 15. Y'all may know where Ruskin Cave is in, out of Dixon. Uh, that's where a lot of young people went. And uh, so we started going down camping. And they got a, got a cave up there that they would have square dances in. And uh, so it was just right for me. <laughs> and uh, they had a competition going. And uh, I borrowed somebody's shoes to wear. They had taps on them. And uh, so I got back. I got back into dancing then, and uh, been dancing ever since. And, and then my little grandson he, he came along, Daniel, which takes care of Granddaddy, uh, banjo picking little fellow you ever seen. Uh, and I think I do my best dancing to old time music. Old time music to me. It's got a, a better beat, got a good beat to do a buck dance to or a flat foot. And uh, clogging, clogging is a, is a young person's dance. I can't do it. But clogging, is, as we know it, as I know it, started coming in about the middle, uh, about the middle last of the 50s, uh, 1950s and 60s. But it's a good, it's a really good dance. You just can't do it when you get older. Your joints won't let you, your joints won't let you do that. And uh, Ben's, I'm not too old, but I still can't do it. <laughs> My joints won't let me either. But uh, old Daniel come along, and uh, we, uh, we're pretty good partners. But he's the boss. He's get, he takes care of granddaddy. Uh, but uh, I'd like to show you a little bit of a uh, sort of how I time myself. There's no right way, and there's really no wrong way. The only way you can dance wrong is to dance out of time with the music. And uh, because we all... We hear the music different. We react to it different, you know. And uh, so that's, it'll be similar, it'll be similar. But you, you hardly very ever see two dancers dance the same. Uh, <clears throat> I, do, uh, I do workshops different places. And uh, I can show you what I do, but you don't want to dance like me. You want to be you. You want to be you, and uh, and and take your time and and where you hear it and make it your own. Make it your own, you know. Then that'll be you. And uh, that's all the way I teach dancing. When I'm, I'm really not a teacher, you know. The music is telling me. The music is talking to me. To me now, it's not about making noise. It's not about making a racket. A note, a note on this right here is a note right here to me. <coughs> and uh, the music is telling me how many notes to put in. And uh, a, a, a a buck dancer or flat foot is very little difference in very very little difference in buck dancer flat footing. I went to Clifftop, West Virginia in two thousand. They they called it mountain flat foot. So uh I signed up on them, I draw my number out. I draw number nineteen. I was the last dancer. So I was really glad of that because I didn't know what they call Mountain Flatfoot. So after about the first one danced, I told my wife, I said, hey, that's, that's my dance. <laughs> so I must have been doing Mountain Flatfoot, so I, they gave me a first place. And uh, so, so I guess I was. Is when they call it Flatfoot, uh, you, know, you just dance closer to the floor, and you don't move around as much. 
but buck dancing, you can use the same steps. You just move around a little bit more, get up a little bit higher, get a little bit higher. Not as high as clogging, but a little bit higher. But I'll, I'll show you how I time myself. Speed, speed has nothing to do with it. Uh, most, most of the dancers are younger, like people, you know. Uh, they want to dance really fast, really fast. You want your body to be part of, to be, your body's got a lot to do with presenting who you are and what you, what you are. And, uh, it's very important to me. Uh, you want to be as smooth as you can. To me, if you're dancing really fast, you're jerking, you're jumping, you know, you're tensed, and you can't put as much in it if you can. You, you can dance too slow. You know, you got to dance fast enough to get momentum going. But uh, uh, to me, I don't like a real fast dance. Never did even when I was younger, you know. I want to have time to get my legs in, you know. So, uh, Daniel, give me just a little bit of music. Feet was should have sounded like shaving hat could do bit. I just missed it. <laughs> but uh, uh, how many how many of you know Tommy Jackson? Terrific. How many of you know Charlie Jackson? That's Tommy's dad. We go back a long, long way, Tommy. Tommy's dad a little older than me, but we used to dance years ago. Cherokee Orchard, which probably wasn't a very nice place to go to. <coughs> dancing years ago, especially square dancing, uh, was pretty rough place. But now it's different. People are going now for for recreation, for uh, uh, exercise, and uh, 
<clears throat> I'm a firm believer. I'm a firm believer that uh, if your kids can't go with you, mom and dad don't need to be there. You know, because we, we are the instructors. And uh, so if there's not a place where you can't carry your kids, then I don't think mom and dad ought to be there myself because I'm not all that righteous, but I do feel that way. <laughs> and, uh, but a square dancing is different now. Buck dancing is different now. Uh, it's a, <clears throat> it is really good exercise. You don't have to get out and run. You don't have to get out and run things. Or, cause, uh, and you don't have to put a lot in it either. You know, it's, it's uh, I didn't start off dancing like this. I've always had good timing, good rhythm. But over the years I've been dancing, I have uh, created, I've, I have created me. And uh, you, you're always looking for something that you, can, that you can build within you, looking for a new step. That's the reason why I say that it's good to get beat because you go and try to learn. You'll try to learn uh, Learn something about it. So, Thomas, Thomas I've got a question. I'm going to come over and sit <coughs> and stand. Well, for the folks, if you will, and I'm from Kentucky, so I, you know, a lot of clogging went up in that area of the country. Would you explain a little bit more the difference between clogging and buck dancing? And I know you were talking about how a little bit higher and so on and so forth, but isn't there is the steps similar to? If you will, explain to the folks, if you will. Well, maybe, maybe where, maybe where that I, uh, uh, they do triples and doubles and jumping up in there and clicking the heels together over here no. and jump, uh, clicking over here. Wagon wheel? Doing a wagon wheel where you, uh. Well, I can't do that. Kick your leg in a circle is what. You put one leg behind you and you do a circle from your knee, knee down and you can get both of them going and then once it's good at it, can unwind them, you know. And it uh, takes a lot of energy. Uh, a lot of Tommy's dancers, square dancers that, that he danced in competition with, uh, they, do, they do a lot of clogging too. And uh, and it's a good dance. It's a really good dance. Young people really like it. But I I've always I'll try to learn something that you can do as long as you can, you know. And uh, if you like rhythm and timing, if you like rhythm and timing, you know it's uh, you can you can just dance as as long as. Well, I was telling this lady here that this man, 93, in Athens, Alabama, Athens State College, he's 93, he got a first, I got a second. 94, he got a first, I got a second. He had to set out a year. 95, he got a fifth. So, so all of them years that he got to, uh, and it's one down there now, is 94, I believe, that's still a good dancer. It's based... I'm going to get around to a minute because uh, I know everybody wants to know where did, where did it come from, you know. Well, actually, where did it come from, you know. Uh, they, they say that it came from Ireland, England. I had a lady come to my house just a few years ago from England. She had wooden shoes, and uh, and she could dance too. <coughs> and uh, and she videoed me, and she said I danced some, some similar to a lot of the older dancers over there. You use some of the same some of the same movements. And uh, but Lamar Lunch was out of North Carolina. 
he went all over the mountains studying, uh, studying buck dancing. And uh, he he said that it came from a Indian tribal dance, black flat back, black flat foot dance, and uh, what was the other name? Irish jig. And the Irish jig. And when I was a little boy, a lot of the older people would say, "Hey, son, dance me a little jig." But now there is jig dancing too. And it's similar. It's similar to buck dancing. Uh, I didn't it, didn't know that until we went to oh uh, somewhere uh, where up a Porter Wagner's from. Oh, uh, West Plains, Missouri. West Plains, Missouri. We was uh, we we went there a couple of three times and. Uh, now, the older people, they did a jig dance, just sort of up on your toes a little bit, you know. And uh, and then we had one person down in, down in Dixon that, that did a jig dance. It looks a little different from buck dancing, but you're mainly more so up on your toes than you are toe and heel. Uh, so, uh, Lamar Lunsford, he went all through the mountains, uh, getting songs, getting songs together, and these old ballads and stuff like that. And I believe he recorded 250. I believe it was 250 ballads in the Library of Congress. Uh, just by memory, didn't have them wrote down. And uh, and he he showed a dancer on there. Bill Macaries. So uh, uh, he said, "Now he's going to do a buck dance, which is not normally done. It's more of a highly skilled dance than than maybe just some dancing." And which he was. He 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 put one foot behind him like this right here. I got chills on it then. Because I have always did that. I have always did that. And uh, and when I do that, I try to hit a toe, toe and a heel while it's back here. And uh, so, and he used to travel around with the, Bill McAree used to travel with a, with a musician being part of the, part of the dance. And I've always heard that a buck dancer is supposed to dance the tune that they're playing. Had a piece of pie, had a piece of pudding, give it all away just to see something good. Well, each one of them, each one of them words is a note. And, and uh, so that's what I try to do. I try to be a part of the tune that's being played. It really don't have to be a, a, a buck dance tune. It just has to have a good rhythm. I can dance to just about anything. Ten o'clock news to put it in rhyme. Put it in rhyme, you know, where it's got a, a steady beat to it. And uh, but they've always told me that a, a buck dancer needs to hit every beat of the lead instrument. Mr. Robert Spicer, which had a lot of dancers out of Dixon. Uh, was a good old time dancer. Matter of fact, he's a, he's the first dancer, first dancer that won the arts out of Washington. What's the name of that? The uh, National Heritage Fellowship Award. And he's uh, he's the first one that ever won that. And right here is the second. <laughs> So, so the two most highly recognized buck dancers in the United States both come from Middle Tennessee. How about that? <clears throat> this man called me one morning, something like 8 o'clock, I guess, 
And uh, and I thought it was a joke, you know. And uh, he asked me what my name was. I told him. He said, uh, you have won the highest honor that you could win in the arts. And that's when I thought he was joking. <laughs> so, I didn't know who he was. And... Uh, uh, he told me he told me that uh, my name had been turned in for that, and uh, so I was I just got through milking a goat now. If y'all ever know how to milk a goat, <laughs> milking by that cow. <laughs> but my oldest daughter, his mom, makes goat soap out of Eagleville, named Maybella, Ma Bella. So she would need some extra milk and and and. Uh, and I helped Daddy milk cows and stuff when I was a kid. But I seen right then I didn't want that job no more, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her, I said, uh, when we turn this go dry, I just believe I'll quit. So, uh, but anyway, he said, milking a goat. Uh, he, I guess this, this man from Washington, he didn't know nothing about milking a goat. <laughs> and... Uh, but I got to I got to go to Washington and uh, at the time I was at that time I was helping uh, a girl learn the dancing for the for the arts in uh, Tennessee and uh, so she's doing good really good. Is that your reason? No, um, no. Courtney Williams Courtney. from uh, Bedford County. Unionville. Uh, one of the girls out of the Uncle Shuffalo band. No, I have caught, I have Hillary a long time ago. Hillary? Oh, she's, hey, she's coming on. She wants to dance with me bad, but I'm not going to give that chance because she would really brag if she beat Thomas Muffet. <laughs> <laughs> and she's my friend. She can dance good. She went to, she went to Clifftop, West Virginia uh, last year, I believe, and, uh, she danced in her age group, so evidently now they're taking different age groups and the winners and putting them together and uh, having a dance off. So she won her age group. She's 25, I believe. 25, I think. Uh, she's older than that because um, I'm 25. Yeah. She's a year older than me. Oh, she's 26. <laughs> she's 26 then. And but she she won her age group and then she won the whole deal over the other dancers, and uh, uh, so she's uh, she wants to be Thomas Muffin now bad. I'm not gonna dance with her. stuff that I have um, heard is that it, it definitely originated as a being associated with the males but also here, here's a sadder note about it it uh, probably originated with the male African slaves mm -hmm. they referred to them as bucks like livestock isn't that awful That's true. but <coughs> they did <coughs> 
buck dance or a flat foot dance. And uh, that's one of the ideas to where that term originated. And of course, there's Native Americans doing a dance, you know, imitating a deer or something. Nobody knows, but there's all kinds of speculation about it. I'll let him tell well, you more of his opinion. Uh, on they, it. If uh, Native American, Native American, when they're doing that fancy dancing, if you'll notice them, I don't, I don't care how high they jump, how many times they twirl, they'll always be back on the ground on the top of the beat, on the top of the beat. It's different. It's different. Uh, most of the time, you, you're just a hundredth of a second behind the beat by the time you hear it and the time you react to it. But they'll be right on top of that beat, and if they'll come down like this. Come down on the toe, toe, ball, heel. Toe, ball, heel. And... Uh, <coughs> That's the way I dance, but I don't have any Indian in me, as far as I know. But it, that's the way I dance. That's, that's three notes right there. One, one, two, three. Three notes. And and uh, I danced with them once out of Nashville right there. I got a third place, but they was much better than me. Much better than me. But I, I bought a tape. I bought a tape of them doing that. And that's the way they did. They all, to make yourself smoother, you hit on your toe. And then you come down right here with your ball, then you heal. And, and I could understand what they're doing because when you hit, when you hit on your toe, that's, that's a cushion, that sort of cushions your body. But if you hit on your heel, it's not a cushion there. It's a dead. It's a dead beat. But to hit here, you're sort of soft, like you know, you can give to it, and it gives you. If you work off of your toe, you can you can be easier. You can be float. You can float like you know, and you can also put in another step or two. Cause when you when you come down like this right here, there's your weight. There's your weight right there. This foot over here. It can do. It can be doing something too, you know. And uh, you want to try to dance on both feet, both feet, if you can, if you can. And uh, but as far as talking about Kentucky, Ken Kentucky has produced a lot of good dancers. A lot of good dancers. Uh, I think there's some girls from Kentucky supposed to come down at Daymaker to. Uh, sort of see how we do down here, you know. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking to him and seeing, seeing him. Uh, Bill Monroe was a, uh, he called him a buck dancer with a back step. I have always heard of a back step, but nobody has, has really showed me what a back step is or how you do a back step. You think, you would think a back step that you would put one foot behind it like this, and then, the other one behind you going backwards at the same time. Uh, they said I had an aunt that could could set the table that way, going all the way around the table with a back step. So it it makes sense that you're going backwards the whole time. But years ago, we used to have names. They had names for the steps, you know, because and at 7 o'clock, there's a difference in 7 o'clock dance and 11 o'clock dance. Oh. And Cherokee Orchard went all the way to past midnight. Past so you midnight. can imagine how wild they got out there. <laughs> so, I'm well, it, it's, it, if you think about it, it makes sense. Back years and years ago, uh, uh, people had no money and, and, and no place and no way to go. So they would meet, they would meet in their, their little town. People come in and maybe they they just camp out in a little town for a week, uh, uh, the whole weekend. And uh, uh, long about 7 o'clock, they hadn't had much to drink. But long about 11 o'clock, you know, they done drank some white whiskey because they made it. They made it. Uh, and uh, so it, it really makes sense. They get a little looser, you know. Uh, 
Maybe that's where clogging come in. I was going to say they went and into the clogging about that. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? uh, but uh, a <laughs> little higher and a uh, little stagger. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the people has got away from that now. They've got away from it. it uh, square dancing, square dancing and bump dancing is, is, is done out of the skill of it now. And, and, and for exercise, too. Exercise is really good exercise. Dan, do you want to play them? What are you saying we've got out of? We've lost that sense of community that we family. used to. Right. Family. Family, yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think, I think as a whole, back a long time ago, we was all used to working hard. Now, if you, if you, if you can't do it with a stern wheel, you don't do it. You know? So back then, uh, several years ago, uh, you know, people was used to harder work, harder work, and dancing is hard. Square dancing is hard, uh, but they didn't seem to mind it years ago. You know, like they do now. It's mostly young, mostly young people. Thomas got, I believe Thomas got three different groups, different ages, and uh, but they all young people, and. Uh, Does. From the daily, get up and crack the dawn and work all day and look forward to the weekend. <laughs> you, know, you know, everybody gets socialized and family picnics and so on and so forth. And yeah, we, society's gotten away from that. So maybe put the folks to listen to and watch some tapes this year. You put it together and, and uh, pick up on them again. Maybe we can start again. Yeah, maybe, maybe so. Dan, you want to play one? Daniel started playing a banjo when he was 11. He just started playing. And uh, and he has won the national champion when he's 17 years old. Of old time. <laughs> and and he took up playing the fiddle. Uh, he started playing the fiddle. Yes. Yeah. It... Uh... Um, hey, I've won countless fiddle contests. No <laughs> countless. Zero. But he was, he was gifted. I believe he was gifted for the banjo. So he, when he was a little, little old boy, he's been going to me ever since just, just a little old bitty baby like. He just could not keep his hands off of a banjo. He just had to touch a banjo. And, uh, Every other little kid was dragging around a teddy bear, and I was dragging around this old banjo that my dad's friend had gave him, and it, oh, the, you ought to have seen the shape that that thing got in, because I was, I was dragging that around behind me like a kid dragged a teddy bear with <laughs> and that bigger than me. <laughs> I would have been but we was less some... than the size of the banjo at that time, and and trying to drag that around. <laughs> I sure know you've done a lot of, you all have done a lot of shows for me and everybody. Yeah. It's always appreciated so much. Mm -hmm. Your uh, talents, for sure. Let's see if we can show the folks a little bit here. Little yeah. What do you want? What do you want to play?
That was Alabama, out, Alabama gal when she come out tonight. Yep. No, <coughs> I'll play that for you, sure, yeah. It's been a little while since I've played it, but... Uh, you, it's been a little while since I heard it, so... <laughs> you can get it, you can do it. Let's see. One of the first tunes I learned, I think. The Clift out West Virginia, he was about 12, and he was playing a banjo. And uh, there's a lot of people gathered around there because he, he could play pretty good even when he was 12. This fellow rolled up in a wheelchair in a wheelchair and listened for a while. And uh, uh, I was talking to him and. Uh, that's why he left, and uh, so they they kept a plan. A little bit, he came back, and uh, he was asking me about Daniel, and uh, he said, "You know, he had one arm and one leg." He said, "You know, I'm gonna make that boy a banjo." <laughs> well, I thought he was a kid, and you know, one arm, and one leg. How's he gonna make him a banjo? And, uh, but his name was Bill Rickett. He was from Canada. And he had, uh, he was over in another country. They was riding motorcycles, had a motorcycle wreck, and tore one arm off and one leg. And uh, he owned a banjo shop. So this is it right here. He made it, he sent it to him, made it and sent it to him, and, uh, 2009 is <clears throat> the date in here. Uh -huh. William A. Ricard, banjo maker, Ontario, Canada. And uh, it's got a it's got a tubaphone tubaphone tone ring. Tone ring. The it, neck is bird's eye maple and. Uh, the pot is uh, either curly maple or tiger maple, or something like that, and uh, uh, the bridge is a, a custom-made bridge that's the way uh, Bill makes them, you know. Uh, if anybody notices, it looks a little different than a regular uh, banjo bridge. Uh, But it's uh, it's been a good banjo. It's heavy too. <laughs> Danny Robinson, your style, the little two D thing. Yeah. Don't they don't they call that the uh, uh, claw hammer style? Is and you're talking about Kentucky. There there's a whole lot of great great players of that style up there. Roscoe Holcomb was one, and uh, Lee Sexton. Lee Sexton's another great one. String Bean, Grandpa Jones. And both of those guys, of course, which came down here in the Nashville area and uh, played on the Grand Ole Opry and Hee Haw. 
and uh, Tennessee, we had many great ones of our own, like Bashful Brother Oswald and Uncle Dave Macon, and you had another generation come along being influenced by all of those guys, uh, people like Leroy Troy, and you know, Leroy was the first person I ever saw play, and that's what got me into it. And so I was really influenced by him, and then got into listening to those other guys. So I guess you could say I got a double dose of that kind of music. And uh, well, there's not many. There are a lot more than there used to be because there's, you know, people have found out a formalized way of teaching it now, so there's a lot more than there used to be. Yeah. But one concern of mine is the the technical aspects of the style are being kept alive, but we're losing the soul. And uh, same can be said for just about any craft, you know, it's like... Uh, Could you see Depends. Depends. Yeah. The Alvin likes to hear Rocky Talk. Yeah. <laughs> 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 a side, a band chat with a dance yeah. to Rocky Talk. I think that'd be great. Can't promise it sounds like it does at the football games. That's <laughs> <laughs> I believe every old man ought to have a grandson. <laughs> he's uh, he's self-taught. He's self-taught, and uh, and he's playing that fiddle. And he's self-taught playing the fiddle, and he 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 loves the old time stuff. That's the first time I ever heard him play that tune. <laughs> but uh, oh yeah. <laughs> He graduated two years from Matlow with a 4.0, great, great heavies. So uh, that's what he did to take care of granddaddy. <laughs> he, was going, he was wondering if I wrote that. I was going to tell you, uh, you, you probably don't want to hear the verses that I've wrote to these songs. You know? <laughs> I've added a few, but they... Yeah. Depends on what that public is. Yeah. Where did you go to school? High school, college, whatever. Oh, you, uh, you talking about before I went to college, I was homeschooled. Homeschooled. And um, 
where there's a there's a lot of stereotyping of people thinking that uh, homeschool don't have the same standards as, uh, but that's not true. They have higher standards in some cases. Yeah, it all, de all depends. I, mine, with, mine, the case was higher standards. Mm -hmm. His mom taught special education. Mom wanted me to learn <laughs> more than was being taught. Where I've ran into some others that the reason why they homeschooled their kids was because they didn't want them to be exposed to as much. But she wanted me to learn more and to be, to be able to take things at my own pace and make sure that I was actually learning rather than just going through the, going through the motions with everything. And, uh, but uh, I always loved history, always loved to read. Um, and when I got into uh, college, I went to Motlow State Community College, which there's another thing they talk about community college. Same standards, same education, don't cost as much. So I thought, you know, I'm gonna get my, get those two years out of the way at Motlow and uh, Got an associate's degree in uh, Associate of Science in History. And uh, I've just, where, where a lot of people, uh, a lot of kids don't like school, I always love to learn. And uh, guess who he's reading about more, more, before we got ready to come over here? He was on the internet reading about Jesus Christ. And what he, what people think he actually looked like rather than, and uh, they've decided he didn't look like Mel Gibson, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and... <coughs> You won't hear that one. <laughs> yeah, I got this. Um, well, Dad, blame it. Uh, got this sister, you know, and uh, she was running down her list of things that she's got to do as far as chores. Got to mow the yard. And so she's out there doing that. And of course, we got this old cat we used to. And uh, she's running along on that riding mower, you know, not watching where she's going at all. And she hits the cat, and his tail gets cut off. And I'm just, <gasps> oh, my goodness, what are you going to do? She was just as calm as could be. She said, I'm going to take him to Walmart. <laughs> and I said, why in the world would you want to take that cat to Walmart? His tail's missing. She said, don't you know they're the biggest retailer in the country? <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we, uh, we go off and do shows. We leave in, uh, Sunday, 1st of July, going to uh, uh, New, York, New York State. <laughs> the, the, the other coast, Washington State. Washington State. Washington State. Washington State. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, be just like Columbus, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so. So you can see why he does the talking. I don't do no talking much. But anyway, um, uh, we're going to a uh, old it's music, old time stuff that's been going on several years up there. The, uh, and 
What's the name of the Festival of American Fiddle Tunes in Port Townsend, Washington. Port Townsend, Washington. And uh, so we're going to leave Sunday morning, I think about 7 o'clock on the plane, and get back the next Sunday. So uh, next, this coming Sunday. This coming Sunday. But at 80 years old, you know, I wonder how, how am I going to hold up dancing about three different sets in a day. So, but maybe I'll make it. I've always made it, so maybe I will. Well, looking forward to it, and uh, first time we've been there. We've been a lot of places. Been to uh, Bangor, Maine. Been to Berkeley College two years in a row. And had a really good band, but we lost our fiddle player, he passed away. And uh, so it's hard to get a, it's hard to get a member of the band that fits, that fits the band and able to go. They won't call you, they won't call you five minutes before, before time of leave, say, hey, I can't make it. So, but this, this person could. He was ready to go whenever you was ready to go, and he was ready to play when you was ready to play. And he was being a part of the, he wasn't there just as a fiddle player, he was there as part of the band that was helping make the band. And they got along really well. Uh, having My little, best friends in this world. Having a little problem finding uh, someone that sort of fits that bill. Well, uh, that's not already in a band. Uh, Thank you all. Uh, Don't get up here and dance or I'm going to make you recite the Gettysburg Address. short one. Okay. Hey, put two together. Put two tunes together. Put uh, uh, shortened bread and down on it together. Pay about a half of one. About a half of the other one. Could y'all maybe hear or see the difference in the, the way that was? Uh, that's the second time I believe we, we've ever done that. Uh, <clears throat> I have a question for you. I'm in Washington State. Do you have people out there that, 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 that know how to do this type of dance? It's strictly Appalachian. Well, I'm supposed to do a, 
Well, We're, I guess we'll find out when we get there. You don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm supposed to do like a workshop. You'll get people up to do it, you know, and uh, and uh, and maybe do a little talking, a little dancing, something similar to this, you know. Uh, don't know exactly what to expect, <laughs> but I do go to I go to Warren Wilson College in North Carolina and do a workshop deal uh, of a lot of young, lot of young people go to their college and and uh, they are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It is. It's a, it's a big class. Big class. And, uh, do they do that for college credit? Do they take the classes for college credit? Yes. Okay. And you can, you can sign up, uh, even though you don't go to college there, you can sign up to take a class that week mm -hmm. uh, on, on different things. Uh, so I've been doing that probably 10 to 15 years. And, and we just got through. This, this last week, we just got through for the arts, state of Tennessee. He, he's been uh, learning square dance, square dance calls. And then I've been working with a little, with a little boy 10 years old on his dancing. And uh, so we just, we just wound that up this, this last week, of third, last Thursday, I think it was. So uh, I don't know where I'll do it again or not. I did it two years in a row. But I doubt if they want someone to do it every year, same person, you know. I guess might. we'll find out. <laughs> uh, they, they have basket making, basket making, uh, fiddle, fiddle, uh, just a lot of arts that happened years ago. You know, bottom uh, putting bottoms in chairs out of out of hickory, hickory wood like hickory bark like used to. Uh, I never done any hickory. I've seen Daddy do hickory, but I, I bought them too with tw with twine like you they hay with. I seen Daddy take a, a newspaper and sort of swing your hair off. You know, the furs off of keep sticking you. Mine got on fire and burnt my house. <laughs> you got a couple more songs, Daniel, or maybe play just to send us out of here. Play a, play a, uh, mm, snowdrop. I'm not tuned for that. But You're not? Uh, okay, well, whatever. Play a little, about a little Sally Ann. Sally Ann. Sally Well Lady, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs>
championship of old time banjo. Except the banjo was in tune then. <laughs> I taped it, I taped it, got a good got a good picture, but no sound. <laughs> For those of you into the technical aspects of it, we had the XLR only switch flipped <laughs> and had no XLR mics, so yeah. And, uh, That's a <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we, uh, paddle, yeah. we're glad y'all sat here this long and listened to a bunch of old stuff. Uh, no, we but uh, we're glad, hey, we're glad y'all come and, uh, and, and hope you got a little bit out of what we said. Uh, uh, I know everybody asked, everyone asked me. Where did Buck Dixon come from? Uh, it's hard to say where it come from. For me, for me now personally, it came from here. It came from here, how, how I hear the music. And uh, so that's on the way I can. Uh, but anyway, I'm glad y'all came out. Pre I really do appreciate it. Thank y'all. Yeah, man. Thomas Moppin, Daniel Rothwell, man. Seriously, 80 years old. Appreciate you, Thomas. Big time. Again, thank you, Wims County Public Library. Love you. Lindsay, so much, man. Thank you for doing this and letting us come in here. We'll be back here. Um, forgive me, I don't, do we have the calendar of calendar over here? July 10th, we'll be back in here with Taylor Michael from Missouri, and then on July 14th, uh, this is on a Saturday from 2 to 4. I've got Scott Southworth uh, coming in here to kind of explain the uh, music industry a little bit, you know, from the writing side of things, from royalties. And he'll be performing uh, songs, that original songs, and some, uh, I guess he'll do some covers. He's just got back from a trip over in Ireland, uh, two trips this year already. Uh, he was WSM. He had a radio station on Sunday evenings at uh, WSM Radio. So, uh, uh, folks, look at look at the live look on the website the library uh, puts out. And uh, again, I'm Don Swartz, Southern Trade Songwriters. Uh, come out and see us, man. It's this is a great thing, and uh, hope we continue to do this. Put your hands together for Thomas Mop and Daniel Rothwell. Say hello to him real quick if you want to. Thank you.